Heparin is not administered orally. It is an injectable anticoagulant. Now even in the injectable form, intramuscular route is avoided. Why? You will find the answer in today's video. Just stick to it. So coming to the heparin, it belongs to the class of indirect anticoagulant. Now the other an indirect anticoagulant that we have discussed before is the warfarin. Now heparin is much safer than the warfarin. But as I told you, heparin is given through the parenteral route only. So its frequent use decreases the patient compliance. Now there are other some differences between the heparin and warfarin. You can watch all of them in our clip on scadia.com, heparin versus warfarin. For now, let's focus on the heparin only. Well, the heparin was first discovered in, in the porcine gut and it was obtained from the vesicles that are present in the mast cells uh, along with the histamine. Now structurally, it is a mucopolysaccharide containing the chains of amino sugar that bears the carboxyl group and the sulfate group. Now this chain length basically vary and uh, the efficacy of the heparin also vary according to the chain length. So you see that it is highly ionized and bears negative charges. Now due to this reason and due to the attachment of the sulfate groups, it cannot cross the gastrointestinal membrane. Also, most of this drug is inactivated by the stomach acid. That is the reason it is not given through the oral route because it shows poor bioavailability. Now, it is not like these charges are very bad or um, as they are not allowing the passage of the drug across the gastrointestinal membrane. Actually, they are greatly beneficial in certain ways, like they contribute to the complex formation with the antithrombin that underlies the anticoagulant effect. I will be detailing this later. And also, they permit the binding of the heparin to its antidote, protamine, that is administered in case of heparin toxicity. Well, this is a uh, you can say that this is the general structure of the heparin that it will consist of the amino sugar, the carboxyl group and the sulfate group. Now the heparin can be fractionated or in unfractionated form and it can also be in the synthetic form. The one that we obtain from the porcine gut is the unfractionated form. So let's move to the next section to discuss about the different types of the heparin.